Hello everybody! In this particular video we're going to download and install the Oracle 10G and I'm purposely going back to 10G because I'm installing this on a Windows machine and I have from personal experiences have noticed that the 11G um, especially the release 2 of the 11G uh, doesn't like to run. It's uh, very memory intensive and uh, it's hard to get the server to start and stop so I have better luck with the 10G so if you are uh, installing on a Windows XP machine and your operating system is on the older side, you might want to, to try the 10G instead. You might have some better luck with it. Um, and I am installing this from this particular website that you're looking at right now. I'll make it a little bit bigger. Write down this URL, go to this address, and you will find... Let's see, I'll make it a little bit bigger. Let's see. It's about as big as I want to make it, probably. It's as big as I need to make it. Go to this address on your web browser and uh, go ahead and start, uh, you know, open up your web browser, go to this address. And the first thing you're going to be uh, addressed with is, uh, as making this video actually, is 11G, which is the current release from September 2011. If you scroll down the page a little bit, you'll see an option that says download the previous release, and this one is the one for 10G. And uh, I'm only doing 10G because I'm on a Windows XP machine. If you're on a Windows 7 machine, uh, you we uh, probably are going to want to do the 11G, perhaps. The databases are pretty much the same, uh, well, the minor differences. If you click on this download button, here it goes, you'll get two options that are available. And um, I've already logged in. Uh, you might actually end up with a prompt uh, before you even get to that screen that asks you to um, log in uh, with your... Uh, Oracle account. Um, if you don't have one, you can go ahead and set one up. You can use a Yahoo account uh, or a Gmail account, just some generic uh, email address. Give them uh, to get on their mailing list. But it allows you to download the stuff. There's nothing to pay. Um, but you might end up with a prompt to log in before you get to the screen. Um, if you've gotten to the screen, what you want to do is press on the Oracle Database 10G Express Edition download button here, and a window should pop up momentarily with a download prompt. No, instead I'm going to get stuck into this window. And this one is going to have me either accept or decline, so I'm going to accept the license. And when I accept the license, it's going to give me an option here. What uh, I'm going to download, you don't want just the client. You don't necessarily need the universal unless you want multilingual support. Uh, if you want just English, then click on the option here to download the Oracle XE.exe file. And then I click on that. I'm going to get a little window that pops up eventually. Here it is. Click on Save. And this is will save it to the desktop. And pick a uh, location. Actually, I'm going to call this one here. And... Uh, basically sit and wait for your file to download. I'm going to pause the video and come back when my download is complete so you don't have to watch this. According to this, um, looks like it's going to be 51 minutes and it probably will adjust in the next few minutes. shouldn't take you more than, I want to say about 10 minutes, 10 or 15 minutes to download this. It's not that big. Uh, so go ahead and let yours run. Return to the video when your download is completed. I'm going to pause mine. So I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, my download completed, and as you can see, um, I've got a download complete. So I'm going to go ahead and press close, and I'm going to close my web browser. And lo and behold, on my desktop, what is this? This is, uh, well, that's old. Let's take that back up there. We have this file here. This is the file Oracle XE file that I just downloaded. I believe that other file was for 11G. Uh, from an earlier attempt, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of it. So this is the file as it looks. It's called oraclexe.exe. I'm going to double click on it and run through the install so you can see how the install is performed. Let's select run. And now it is preparing to install, extracting Oracle Database 10G. Let that go for a few minutes. There's really not too many prompts, so the install does run fairly quickly. So it won't be too bad. Once it's installed, I'll show you which services get installed that you might want to disable. Um, if you're going to be using the system on a regular basis, you could manually start the database rather than having it run all the time. So I'm going to click Next. 
I'm going to accept the terms of this agreement that we've all read, right? All of these many, many different lines of small print. And this is Oracle Database 10G Express Edition, and I'm going to press Next. And you have specified a non-empty directory to install this product. Uh, let's take a look here. Uh, which directory have I selected? I selected Oracle. Well, that's okay. Uh, it's recommended that you specify an empty directory or a non-existent directory if you want to proceed with the install. Uh, let's take a look out here. Uh, let's, let's say no, actually, for a second here. Let me go out and check a look here. I did... Uh, I did try to install 11G uh, unsuccessfully. So let me take a look here. And yes, lo and behold, that directory does exist. And it should be fairly empty, actually. It is. So I'm going to go ahead and delete it, actually. If you have a previous install, you probably want to delete or uninstall whatever was previously installed, uh, just to make sure you have a clean install. So now when I press Next, I was presented uh, with a screen to enter in my password. This is the password that you must remember. If you don't remember this password, you're going to have to reinstall Oracle in order to uh, recover the password. There's no other way of recovering the password. And this is the password that's going to be used for the system account. System is another word for admin. So the admin account is actually, the username is called system. And so go ahead and select a password for system and type it in twice. Okay, and then click on next. And uh, I'm going to use all the defaults for everything, as I see. Very good. So I'm going to press install. And now the install wizard shall be installing Oracle 10G. And let's see what we have going on here. Copying files. Well, be patient. I guess I could ramble for a few minutes while this is going, but I won't bore you. This really shouldn't take too long, actually. Um, quite impressive, actually, how fast the install goes. So once we create the database, we have a couple of services we can check to make sure that they're running. And, uh, and what I'm going to recommend for you to do is uh, to make them manual rather than automatic. That way, every time you reboot your system, the Oracle database background server is not going to be running. Now, another kind of interesting thing is um, I've got the Glassfish uh, server running on my computer right now, actually. I may need to disable that when I'm running uh, Oracle for right now, because I am running everything all, all on one computer. If I have multiple servers running on the same port, I might end up with a conflict, uh, but I'm going to see that momentarily. I won't know actually until I have, a, have this installed. So this is sort of an experiment uh, to see what's going to happen. But I do have, um, while this is going, I can show you real quick here. I do have the Java EE um, installed from the last video. And uh, I have the Glassfish here, Stop Application Server. I may need to select this option, but I'm not going to do it yet. I'm going to see if the Oracle server is going to run first. Actually, we can see it already. There's a little icon that got put on the desktop getting started with Oracle that is a web server application. And, uh, that application is going to run in an mm, Oracle server, if you want to call it that. Um, on a, it's attached to port 8080, uh, which is generally a web server, Apache type you know, server port. And uh, the Glassfish server is also on that port. There's a web server that gets installed with the Java EE. So I'm expecting there to be a conflict, but uh, we'll wait and see. If there is a conflict, we just stop one and start the other. And I can show you how to start and stop. So, so we're configuring the database at this point. Uh, this is going to run for a few minutes. And uh, let's take a look. I shouldn't expect more than two or three minutes at the most here. Maybe less. Configuring the database. And uh, this is very similar actually to the 11G. I just uh, actually just ran through the 11G myself a few minutes ago. It looks very similar. So you may choose the 11G. It's more current. If 
for what we're going to do in this course, it doesn't really matter what version of Oracle you have. Uh, launch a database homepage. Sure, why not? This will be a good test to see if we have a conflict. So I'm going to click on Finish. And lo and behold, the database homepage is going to come up. And it's coming up on my local server. And I'm going to get it. Oh, I did not get an error message. This was a very good test. A few minutes ago when I installed the 11G, I got an error message, which was kind of interesting. Uh, and the error message was because down here on the bottom, I did not stop the Glassfish server uh, that is running. And this is part of the Java EE that we installed in one of the previous videos. Uh, but here I can test the database by typing in, and you should do this as well if you have just finished your install. We can type in, we can see the uh, GUI interface to the database, and we can see that this is running on our local port here. And the database name, well, the username is system, so that's the admin, so just remember system instead of admin. And then here, this is the password that you used during the install. Um, so that was the password you gave the system. If you press on login, it should successfully log you in. Yep, it has. Very nice. It's good when things work. Um, so I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can sort of see what's going on here. This is the main page that you're greeted with. Um, and this is in Microsoft Windows Explorer. It's the web interface. So if I click on, uh, as an example, uh, I don't know, yeah, administration. I get the options for administration. I can use the back button. Uh, looks like my memory is about 50% uh, sessions for total. Uh, how many are active? One. That's good. Um, so this is pretty good. Um, so that was a good test. It looks like my database is up and running properly. If I go to the start menu, I should see in my programs directory, which I do. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see this a little clearer. I see new menu options available, and this is where I can start and I can stop the database. So, and I can also go to a command line interface for the database. So what you just saw a few minutes ago was the web interface, and the web interface I got to it from go to database homepage. So if I select this option here, go to database homepage, that's where I get this screen here that we just saw a few minutes ago. Let me zoom out a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about. This is that screen uh, that we were just presented with, and I got to that option by going to the database homepage. If I don't want to use this particular option and I want to use a more of a you know, streamlined command line approach, which I actually kind of prefer, I can go to Programs, uh, Oracle Database, and click on the, um, there it is, Run SQL Command Window. If I do that, I'm presented with a window that looks like, sort of like a DOS prompt, actually. Uh, but it isn't. It is an interface to the database. And on this window, I can type in the word connect space system and then enter the same password I used in the web interface and then I'm connected. So then I can browse and I can run SQL. I can, uh, I can select star from dual. I don't know if dual is actually a table in this one. Uh, no, it's not. Um, so, long story short, um, I can, once I create tables, <laughs> I can run queries and do all sorts of things. If I want to exit the window, I type in exit. If I have that window open and I try to go to the database window uh, on the web, as an example here, let me open up this window again. And uh, let me log in real quick. I'm just typing in connect system. It's kind of small, so you probably can't see it. So I have this session open, and uh, I'm going to open up the window for the uh, web interface as well. I'm going to go to the database homepage. Sometimes it may give you an error. Let's see what happens. System. Uh, nope, it didn't, which is very good. Some of the older versions of Oracle would tell you that you're already logged in because you have two simultaneous sessions. One of the things with the Express Edition is you have limited to, or what is it supposed to be limited to, one. It looks like here that we have a total of five, which is kind of interesting. Uh, but one active session at a time, which means you can't deploy this and have a client-server database set up and have multiple people logged into it simultaneously um, without paying for it. Uh, so the Express Edition, one of the limitations used to be, and it apparently 
wasn't a limitation here. However, maybe that's one machine or one lo location. I'm still all on the same IP address, so maybe I can have simultaneous from the same address. Uh, but you're only supposed to have one connection simultaneously. Uh, the other limitation is the disk space. Um, it won't allow you to use more than a certain amount. I don't remember exactly how much that is. But all of the Express editions have slight limitations to them. But for the purposes of this course and what we're going to be doing in it, um, the limitation is not going to be something that's going to hold you back. Um, if you click on this one here, it says Getting Started with Oracle Database, this will automatically be on your desktop once you've installed Oracle. It'll take you to a nice little tutorial. I highly recommend reading through the tutorial. Um, it'll show you how to unlock the sample user accounts, uh, which might come in handy. Uh, in fact, we can do that right now. Um, that way we have something to work with. Um, in fact, that's an excellent idea. In my next video, I have some sample programs, and I'll create them in the HR account. And the HR account is going to be needing to be unlocked. So go ahead and unlock the sample user account. Um, so if we click on Unlock Sample User, we're uh, going to create, uh, we'll, we'll just put our applications in there actually. The sample database is called HR, the login is HR, the password is HR. So to make sure, you're, uh, to unlock the sample user account, make sure you're still logged in as the database administrator. Well, that means we need to log in, so let's log in. Uh, let's actually log in using the web. So I'm going to go to the database homepage. And I'm going to log in again as a system administrator, which is system. And when I do that, I'm going to click on login and uh, follow the instructions. If I follow the instructions, the instructions are going to tell me. Whoops, looks like the instructions are also going to be. Oh, there we go. We still get the instructions. Very good. To click on the administration icon and then click on database user, then click on HR scheme to display the user information for HR and then there's going to be a little button down there so if we click on let's go back to this page and we click on the administration screen and then we click on the database users and then we click on HR which is the only one there that's the sample and then we're presented with this screen here the default password says password expired interesting this is account locked. So I'm going to change the password. Actually, I'm just going to make mine HR lowercase. HR, HR. And then I'm going to click on this option here that says unlock. And let's see what's else down here. Uh, users, default user, table space. We'll get into that later. If you take the database Oracle class, I talk about table spaces as well. Uh, we're good. So I'm going to click on alter user. Alter user. It's the actual SQL command that you would use to actually change the user. So I'm going to click on alter user. So now your password changed and the user was altered and it should now be visible. So if I go to the, let's say, to back to the command line interface, run the SQL statements here, and I type on connect HR, connect HR. And I type in HR, which is my new password. I'm connected. So let's see. Actually, let me just see real quick here what tables are in HR. Uh, oops, let me cancel out of that. Back out a little bit here. I'm actually going to log in as the HR here. Uh, so if I go back to the main window, actually, let me just log out. If I log out and then I log back in, this time I'm going to log in as HR. Now I can actually browse the tables and the objects that exist. The object browser is going to give me a list of the tables. So now we have one that says jobs on it. And jobs, it looks like, uh, is a pretty simple table. So I'm going to test that out. I'm going to run a simple SQL command that's going to say select star jobs. And there we go. So I can now see everything that is in the jobs, uh, the president, administrator, looks like uh, and the interesting thing about this, this window, is that it, it does actually kind of scroll, it's nice, uh, 19 rows selected, it's kind of the, the old-fashioned kind of way of doing it, if you prefer this method here, you can, instead of 
looking at the table itself, you can just click on the data and you can actually see in a more graphical approach here. What I did here, just so you know, is I clicked on Object Browser from that main screen. Let's go back. Oops, probably shouldn't use that back button. If I go home and I click on Object Browser, this is where I'm going to find all the tables and stuff. This will actually give me uh, SQL command window. Uh, so now I can say uh, select star from jobs and uh, I can run it and I can get this graphically down here. If I don't know SQL, don't want to use SQL, I can go back to the home page, click on the object browser, click on the table itself here, jobs, and then these are different views. These tabs on the top are going to give you a view of the indexes that are on the table, the model itself in an entity relationship format, or this one here says data. It's actually going to show me the data that is in the table. Um, so some people prefer the GUI interface. Uh, you can look at tables, views, indexes, sequences, all sorts of stuff. You can do all the data manipulation for the Oracle system in this GUI interface. You never have to see an SQL prompt. Some people like the SQL prompt, especially if you're given a script and you want to run it. Um, so to each his own. Uh, in fact, in this uh, particular database course when I'm demoing, I'm going to have to set the database up. And when I do that, eh, who knows what I'll use. I'll probably use the SQL window. But um, in essence, this is the interface you get with the, uh, the database homepage. So let me show you something else before I end this video. Something that's of up, utmost up importance. Uh, you type in exit, actually, and it will exit out of that screen. We have an option down here. And the option down here, in fact, let me show you before we show you those options. Let me show you what's going on. If I click Start Menu and click on Run, and I go to services.msc, or I go into the control panel and I click on services. I can also get to this page. I'm just too lazy to go to the control panel. I have a list of running services, and if I sort them in alphabetical order, uh, which I'm going to do right now, which I just did a second ago, get the screen clear here, make the screen a little bit bigger. Let's see. There we go. I'm going to find ones that are in here that are associated with Oracle. And there we are. We have the Oracle Job Scheduler. This one is disabled. Let me make this column a little bit bigger so you can see these descriptions properly. And make it a little bit bigger. There we go. All right, so this one here is not started and it is disabled. This one here is uh, manual, which means when you select the menu option, um, to run the backup and the restore and the recovery information, that's actually going to start automatically, and it's, it's on manual. Here we have the Oracle Service.xe, which has started, and we have this other one down here, the Listener, which has started. And then we have this other one that's on manual. This is for a different one. Uh, we're not even going to use this for the course. So the two that need to be started are these two. If your Oracle system is not running, these are not going to say, probably not going to say started. Or if they are started and you have another server running simultaneously on the same port, you're going to have an issue and uh, you might need to change these. Um, I would highly recommend putting these on manual. Uh, so let me show you what happens if you put them on manual. If you put them on manual, and I'm going to show you that in a few minutes, I go to the start menu. If I look at the Oracle options that I have available, I have one that says start database and stop database. If I stop the database, this will open up a window here and you can see that the Oracle service XE service is stopping and it says that it has stopped successfully. It only stops this service, it does not stop the other service. So if I go in here and I look at it, well I have to refresh this view here, hold on a second. Let me, uh, actually, the easiest way I think is just to close that window and go back into it. I should see the service stopped. And uh, let me see the service. Here it is here. And it is stopped. As we can see, what we've got going on here now, let me zoom in a little bit, is that the status before it was started 
automatic started, and this one was automatic started, though, but the listener is still going. So let me manually stop the listener and put this on manual, and I'm going to stop it. And I'm going to actually go back here on this Oracle Service XE, this one that actually did stop automatically. I'm going to put this one on manual as well. It's already stopped, so I don't have to worry about it. And I'm going to apply. And, oops, I disabled it. I'm sorry. I don't want to disable that service, otherwise my Oracle's not going to work. I'm going to put it on manual. <laughs> apply. Okay, so I've got this one on manual, and I've got... Uh, I thought I'd put that one on manual as well. Let's put this one. You know, I'm going crazy. This one's on manual. So let's just put them all on manual. I thought I had put that one on manual. I guess I did not click apply, perhaps. There we go. This is what I want to see. I want to see this one on manual, this one on manual, this one. Everything that says Oracle on it, except for this one that says job scheduler, put on manual. If you do that, every time you turn it on your computer, you're not going to get the Oracle database running. And if you don't get the Oracle database running, which is great, no problem if you're not using it. And if you are going to use it, then what you're going to end up doing is you're going to have to start the database. So right now the database is not running. If I try to go to the database, if I go here and I say run my SQL command, it's going to look like it's running. But if I say connect system, let me make this a little bit bigger so you can see it, and I go system going to say I got a protocol adapter error. Well, it's, it's not running. The, the window's still here. It's still installed, but it's not running. So I'm going to have an issue. So if you get a protocol adapter error, or you get something like this that occurs. If you go into the, um, go to go to the home page, go to the database home page, and we get this. This means your server's not running. If you get this and the service is running, you have a conflict with something else that's running on this port at the same time, which if you have the Java EE version installed and you have Glassfish installed, which is a server technology, it might actually be on the same port. If it's on the same port, you're going to have a problem with it, and you'll have to disable that. And if you're disabling that, you're going into here and you're saying, stop the application server. So if you you have the Java EE 6 SDK installed and you get this message and your Oracle servers services are, are running properly and the Oracle database has started but you're getting that message then you stop this one here. Otherwise this one is pretty lightweight it can run all the time it's not a big issue um, or if you find that you know you have a system slugging sluggish kind of system you can stop it but you can start the application server and stop the application server using this uh, for the Java EE and you can also go in here and start and stop the database manually. So let's say for example I want to start the database. I click on start database. A little window pops up. It says that the Oracle listener service is starting and the Oracle EXE service is starting. And then I'll come back in a few minutes and say that that was successful as well. See? Both of these two items are what starts and what runs the server. We have the listener and then we have the service itself. Um, and so if I type in exit and I refresh, now I should get the Oracle database page in a few minutes. Yep, there it goes. I have the database express edition. Now it looks like everything's running. And now if I go back in here and I take a look at the services that I have running, I'm going to notice that the Oracle stuff is now started. So I'm going to scroll down to Oracle. And now I see, although it's manual, it's started. And we have manual, the listener has uh, started. So let me just show you that point one more time, though, just, uh, just to reiterate a kind of an interesting, weird thing. If you go into Programs, Oracle, and you stop the database, it only stops one of the servers. It doesn't stop both of them. Stop database here. Notice it only stops the XA. It doesn't stop the listener. So if you really care about memory, if your system is kind of 
pushing it as is, you're going to have to, after you stop the database, and this is just something weird that I've noticed, uh, and you go back into system, you go back into the services and you take a look at it, you'll notice by manually stopping it, only one of the services actually stops. The other one, the listener, is still running. So that's one of the things you know to watch out for, especially if if you're really cautious or you know, conscious about the, the memory on your system and how fast it's running. You might notice a performance um, degradation. You might not. But if I rebooted the system right now and uh, come back in, they're both going to be shut off. So um, that saves a saves a little bit of processing power, I guess. Why 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 run a server if you don't have to? Is uh, I guess the point I'm trying to make. So. You know, besides, it'll make everything run slower. Um, although I have noticed, and I'm even running in a virtual machine environment, that um, my computer doesn't really run that slowly with the uh, Oracle installed. And I'm leaving the Glassfish server on constantly, so and I don't really notice a performance hit with that either. So anyway, that was everything I ever wanted to know about the install of the Oracle database, the Oracle 10G database. 11G is just almost practically identical to that, except for it says 11G instead of 10G. The installs are just about the same. So go ahead and install your system. Make sure you do keep note of um, the password that you have used during the install. Uh, go ahead and unlock if you're going to do if you're taking the Java EE course and you're going to be running the Java database uh, JDBC drivers coming up next. Um, in the coming up videos, uh, go ahead and unlock the HR account uh, because you're going to need it for the examples that we're going to run run through. So, and uh, not a bad idea. Go ahead and get familiar, getting started guide. Go ahead and read through the guide. Show you how to navigate the system. Um, a few, a few little bit more things about forms and reports and stuff. So, kind of orient you to the database environment. Anyway, so uh, get your Oracle installed and come back for JDBC coming up soon. Thanks for watching.